Chapter 5 Key of Soul Unquestionably, the most important thing in life is the realization of the inner being. Once I inter interrogated my Divine Mother Kundalini as follows. How is it that the path that leads to the resurrection is extremely long? And she answered me, It is not that the path is too long, rather the work with the philosophical stone is very hard. It must be worked, chiseled. It is necessary to give the brute stone a perfectly cubic shape. Our motto, our motto is telema, meaning willpower. We must begin by awakening the consciousness. Obviously, all human beings are asleep, and in order to see the path, it is necessary to be awakened. Thus, what is essential is to awaken here and now. Unfortunately, people sleep. It seems incredible, but this is how it is. We wander the streets with the consciousness of sleep. We are in our house, in our job, in the body shop, in the office, etc., with the consciousness profoundly asleep. We drive our car and go to the factory with the consciousness tremendously asleep. People are born, they grow, they breed, they get old and die, all with the consciousness asleep. Thus, they never know where they come from, nor the objective of their existence. And what is most grave in this matter is that all of them believe that they are awake. For instance, many people are preoccupied in knowing many esoteric things, yet they never occupy themselves with the awakening of their consciousness. People had the purpose of awakening here and now, then immediately they could know all of that which for them are enigmas. This is why skepticism is, exists, because the skeptical is ignorant, and ignorance is the outcome of a sleeping consciousness. Indeed, I want to tell you in the name of the truth that skepticism exists because of ignorance. Therefore, the day when the people awaken their consciousness they will stop being ignorant. And as a fact, skepticism will disappear because ignorance is equal to skepticism and vice versa. Indeed, Gnosis is not a doctrine that seeks to convince skeptical people because if today we convince 100 skeptical individuals, tomorrow we will have to convince 10,000. And if we convince then the 10,000, then a hundred thousand will appear who want to be convinced, and so on and so forth. Thus, we will never be done. The system to attain the inner realization of the being is a matter of cognizant works and voluntary sufferings. Yet, continuity of purpose in the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness is necessary. Logically, in order to achieve the awakening of the consciousness, it is necessary to die from instant to instant, moment to moment. And here in this about section, or glossary, I guess, the three factors are one, to be born as a soul, the liberation and actualization of virtues. This is the creation of solar bodies, the Merkava in, in Kabbalah or Judaism, uh, this is the Tantric path in Buddhism, practice of a Tantrayana or Vajrayana, the highest Buddhism. To die psychologically is the second factor, mystical death, the decapitation of the ego, purification of pride, anger, lust, envy, etc. These are conditions of the ego, the subconsciousness. Three is to sacrifice for others. This is service, charity, selflessness, loving-kindness, altruism, and bodhicitta, which is uh, essentially wisdom, mind, heart, which also comes from the cultivation of energy. The conserving of energy so that you can do more with your own mind and help others. 
Continuing on, the sleeping person ends up intoxicated when in the presence of a cup of liquor. The sleeping person ends up fornicating when in the presence of the opposite sex. Thus, the sleepy ones become identified with everything that surrounds them and forget themselves. From my memory, as this very moment, at this very moment, I recall the unusual case of Piotr uh, Demianovic Ospensky, who, when walking in the streets of St. Petersburg, had the resolve to remember himself and to not forget about himself, not even for an instance, instant. Thus, he said that as he remembered himself from moment to moment, he even perceived a spiritual aspect within all things. And while this type of spiritual lucidity was increasing, he felt his psyche gradually transform, and etc. Nevertheless, something very discouraging happened to him. All of a sudden, he felt the necessity to enter a smoke shop in order to select an order of some tobacco. Certainly, after being attended and provided with his order of cigars, he left the smoke shop very quietly while smoking along an avenue. Thereafter, remembering different things and occupied in diverse intellectual matters, etc., he walked through different places of St. Petersburg. In other words, he became absorbed in his thoughts. And an hour and a half later, already at his home, he observed very well his room, his bedroom, his living room, his desk, and suddenly he remembered that he had first wandered through many places with his consciousness awake, and after having entered into the cigarette shop, he, his psyche had fallen asleep again. And thus his good intentions of remaining awake from moment to moment were reduced to cosmic dust. Thus he regretted the incident. He took an hour and a half to reach his home, and during that entire time, he regrettably walked the streets of the city with his consciousness completely asleep. Behold, how difficult it is to remain with the consciousness awake from instant to instant, from moment to moment, second after second. However, if one has true longings for becoming awakened, this is the beginning. One must not forget oneself, not even for a moment. Yes, one must keep remembering oneself wherever one walks, in any living room or in whichever street one goes by, walking, jogging, or riding a car, whether it be night or day, wherever one might be, at work or in the shop, anywhere, one must remember oneself, while at the presence of any beautiful object, or while before any window shop, where very beautiful things are being shown, etc. In other words, one must not become identified with anything that one likes or is captivated by. What he's explaining here is self-awareness, right? You might be concentrated on a thing, but are you aware that you're part of that concentration? You're the one observing it. You're there. You're seeing it. You need that self-awareness. Otherwise, you just have concentration, which can get hypnotized. It always does. So here's something he's teaching. It's um, he's going to explain subject, object, and uh, location, I guess, yeah. So subject. The person needs to always keep remembering himself. Not only his physicality, but also one needs to watch one's own thoughts, feelings, emotions, deductions, desires, fears, longing, etc. Object. Beloved brothers and sisters, it seems to me that this second part, object, is abundantly intriguing because it is related with becoming inquisitive about objects, that is, with not becoming identified with things. As we already stated, I mean, as we already stated, thus, if you see a beautiful object, i.e. a suit within a window store or an ex uh, exposition of something, 
an exhibition of anything, a very beautiful car, a pair of wonderful shoes, anything. What is important is to not become identified with the thing and to know how to distinguish between common things and uncommon things. Like a strange animal, an elephant that flies, or a camel that appears in the middle of a living room, etc. Thus, the first thing that one needs to do is to reflect. One needs to not become identified with the object or creature that one sees, because if one becomes identified with what one sees, that is, if one is absorbed by the representation before one's eyes, then one remains fascinated. In other words, one passes from identification to fascination. And this is how one remains enchanted, or marveled, identified. If one forgets oneself, then thereafter one's own consciousness falls asleep and will snooze profoundly. This is what it means to be hypnotized. It happens all the time when we sleep. Oh, sorry, well, yeah, when we sleep, dream. When we watch TV, when we watch movies, when we get into a conversation, we're just completely absorbed in the story, the images. We just forget that we're there, right? You forget that you're part of the conversation because you're spending so much time like, listening to the person, just watching the person's eyes and face and their tone of voice, and you forget that you could be dreaming. Right? But that self-awareness wasn't there. So he continues, Thus, dear, my dear brothers and sisters, the only thing that one achieves with this mistake, mistaken behavior, that is, by allowing oneself to become foolishly fascinated with objects, is to deactivate the consciousness, to put it to sleep. And this is critical, very critical, very critical, very critical. Location. From my memory, at this very moment, I recall another unusual case. Many years ago when I was traveling through the countries of South America, since as a traveler I always walked around from one country to another around the world, on a given insight, sorry, on a given night, it so happened that I saw myself walking through a garden, then into a living room, and through it, and finally, I arrived at a lawyer's office, where I saw seated at a desk a lady of a certain age with gray hair, who very amiably attended me. She stood up and greeted me. And suddenly, I observed that two butterflies made of crystal were on the desk. Well, there is nothing odd about seeing two butterflies on a desk, right? Yet, the intriguing aspect of this matter is that the two butterflies were alive, actually. They were moving their wings, their little heads, their little legs, and that is very odd, right? So this was very unusual and intriguing. Two butterflies that made of crystal, uh, they made of crystal and alive. These butterflies were not normal. It is clear that they were not natural. My beloved brothers and sisters, this was something odd. It was a case where one has to become very inquisitive. Well then, do you want to know what I did? I did not become identified with the pair of butterflies. He means fascinated, hypnotized. I only pondered the following question within myself. How is it possible that there exist in the world butterflies whose bodies are made of crystal whose heads, legs, and wings are made of crystal and that breathe and have life like the natural ones. Thus, this is how I reflected, my brother, uh, beloved brothers and sisters. What if I had become identified with the butterflies and not pondered an analytical question without reflecting on those butterflies made of crystal? What if I had become fascinated or enchanted and had fallen into unconsciousness? Well, that would have been foolish, right? However, I reflected by pondering the following statements to myself. No, it is impossible for these types of creatures to exist in the physical world. No, no, no. This is very strange, very odd. This is not normal. Here I smell something fishy. There is something rare. This, the type of phenomenon, as I know, does not exist. 
in the tri-dimensional world, since this is only possible in the astral world. It seems that I am in the astral dimension. Could it be that I am in the astral world? Then I question myself. It seems that I am dreaming. It seems that I have left my physical body sleeping somewhere, because indeed this is very odd. So in the order to be sure, I am going to perform a small jump in the intention of floating in the environment. Thus, this is how I will verify if I am in the astral body. So let us see what happens. So he's saying this to himself. So this is what I said to my... Oh, yeah, he says right here. So this is what I said to myself. Yes, brothers and sisters, with complete confidence, I can tell you that this is how I proceed. It is obvious that I had to proceed in this manner, in that manner, and not in any other manner, right? However, I was concerned about jumping in front of that lady. Thus, I said to myself, This lady might think that I am a nutcase if I start jumping here in her office. Apparently, everything was very normal. A desk like any desk, the chair where the lady was seated and was uh, one of those that rotate from one side to the other. There were two candelabra in that office. I remember that one was at the right and the other at the left, but they seem, to, they seem made of massive gold. So I remember this with entire exactitude, my dear brothers and sisters. Even though it happened a long time ago, many years, since I was very young in that epoch. Thus I remember that the candelabra had seven branches. Well, talking here with complete confidence, I did not find anything odd in that room. Everything was normal in that office. However, when I focused my sight on those butterflies, they became the only truly questionable oddity there. As for the rest, I said, there is nothing odd about this lady. She is as normal as other ladies at, uh, in the world. However, these butterflies make me intrigued. The fact that they were alive on their own accord was very rare. Anyhow, be that as it may, I resolved to leave the room with the intention of performing a little jump. Do you understand? Of course, I had to give an excuse to the lady, thus I asked her consent to leave the office. I told her that I needed to leave the room just for a moment, and that I did. Thus, when outside in the corridor and being sure that no one was looking at me, I performed a long jump with the intention of floating in the environment. And behold, let me tell you what happened. Sincerely, I tell you that I immediately remained floating in the surrounding atmosphere. Of course, I felt a delectable sensation, my dear brothers and sisters, a delectable sensation. Then I said to myself, I am in the astral body. Here I do not have even the slightest doubt of it. I remember that a few hours before I had left my physical body sleeping in my bed, and by displacing myself there in the astral world, I had arrived to that place, to that office. Then I went back into that office. I sat again before the lady and spoke to her with much respect. I told her, be aware, ma'am, that we both are in the astral body. Wondering with sleepy eyes as I somnambulist, as a somnambulist, that lady scarcely looked at me. She did not understand. She did not comprehend. Never, nevertheless, I wanted to clarify the situation for her and I told her, Ma'am, remember that a few hours ago you, were, you went to bed to lay down in order to sleep. Therefore, do not wonder, do not wonder why I am, I am telling you this. Listen, your physical body is sleeping in your bed, and you are not here talking with me in the astral. I mean, and you are now here talking with me in the astral world. Yet definitively, that lady did not understand. She was profoundly asleep. She had her consciousness asleep. Thus, upon seeing that everything was useless, comprehending that she would not awaken, not even with cannon shots, since that wretched lady had never dedicated herself to the labor of awakening her consciousness. Then, frankly, my dear brothers and sisters, I resolved to apologize and left. 
Well, a curious thing I wanted, I want to narrate for you that many years after, maybe 30 years or more, I had to travel to Taxco, Guerrero, Mexico. Taxco is a very beautiful town situated over a hill and built in the colonial style. Its streets are stone paved as in the epoch of colonization and it is very rich indeed. It has many silver mines and many beautiful objects and jewelry made of silver and are sold there. I had to travel to that town because someone was making some remedies for a... Uh, oh, there's a typo here. Some remedies for lived there. Oh, because someone I... Because someone I was making... Sorry, it's not a typo actually. Traveled, I had to, I had to travel down there because, uh, travel into town, because someone I was making some remedies for lived there. He wanted to be healed and wanted me to help him in his healing process. He, he was a wretched patient, very sick. Well, I arrived at a house. I crossed the garden and arrived at the living room, which I recognized immediately. 30 years later, there was that lady. I looked at her and recognized her. She was the same lady that I had seen behind the desk many years ago in the astral world. However, this time she was in the living room. She invited me to pass into another room where I found the already mentioned lawyer's office where I, so many years ago, had arrived in my astral body. Yet now, instead of the lady behind the desk, it was her husband, a very well-educated man who, without a title, was dedicated to the law. In some places, these people are called interns. Well, call them as you please. The fact that he was seated there in that office. I mean, the fact was that he was seated there. He stood in order to welcome me. And thereafter, he invited me to sit down in front of his desk. So I immediately recognized the office and the lady. Then it so happened that because that man liked a little these sort of spiritual studies, we talked and conversed for a while on these matters. He liked everything related to, with esoteric studies. Thus I surprised him a little when I told him, Sir, I was here already some time ago. I was out of my physical body, in my astral body. And you know that one moves, walks and goes from one place to another. This gentleman had already known a little about these things, so my statement was not too unusual for him. Then I told him, see on this desk there were two butterflies made of crystal. What happened? Where are those butterflies? And he quickly answered me. Here are the butterflies, right here, look at them. He then raised some newspapers that were upon the desk and certainly they were there the two very beautiful butterflies made of crystal. Of course, he was very astounded that I knew about those butterflies. Then I told him, but something else is missing. I see one candelabra of seven arms, yet I saw two. Where is the other one? What happened to it? Here is the other one. Look at it. A gentleman in his office answered me. He then removed some papers and newspapers uh, that he had there, and indeed, he showed me the other candelabra. Yes, it appeared in order to confirm my assertions even more. Of course, the man was amazed. Then I told him, I want you to know that I know your wife, because when I came here, your wife was at your desk. Well, the gentleman was amazed. Thus, at dinner time, we were seated at a round table and something truly unexpected happened. In the presence of her husband, the lady told me, I met you a long time ago. I don't know exactly where, but I have seen you. Yes, I have seen you before in some place. Anyhow, you are not an unknown person to me. Then I immediately elbowed the gentleman and told him, Do you realize it? Are you convinced of my words? Well, the amazement of that man reached its maximum. <laughs> Unfortunately, and this indeed is what is very critical, 
uh, my beloved brothers and sisters. Uh, that man was so attached to his sect, which we might call a type of Roman sect, that frankly speaking, he did not enter into the path due to sectarian matters. Otherwise, he would have come to the path, because I gave him extraordinary evidence that for him was factual and definite. At least, he became forever amazed, did he not? Regrettably, his beliefs did not allow him. They confused him. He became entangled in all those religious dogmas, etc. Well, many years have already passed, nevertheless, I have been able to narrate this event for you. Thus, this is why I recommend to you the division of attention into three parts. Back to soul, or S-O-L. Number one, the subject, that is to say, oneself. One must not forget oneself, not even for an instant. Two, the object. Observe all things, as in the case of the butterflies that I have narrated to you. What if in this very moment in which you are reading this book, a person that died many years ago arrived to your home and spoke to you? Would you be so naive? Would you be so absent-minded as to not ask yourself, what is this? Could it be that I am in the, my astral body? Would you be as reckless as to not do the experiment, the experiment and to give a little jump? Well then, do not forget that any detail, as insignificant as it may appear, must be enough to order in order to perform this type of inquisition. Thus, every object must be studied in detail, and thereafter, thereafter one must ask oneself, why am I here? Other tricks you can do when you're trying to test whether you're a dreamer or not, and test your self-awareness, it's more so important that you are becoming, that you're self-aware. You don't necessarily have to know where you are, which plane you're on. But another way to do it is to count your fingers very carefully and count five fingers. Try to count five fingers because it's usually very difficult to count five. And even if you do, it won't stay five for very long. After a moment, it'll be seven or 10 or it'd be very strange. Or if you pull your finger, um, it can stretch very easily or just snap off in a dream, and that's how you know you're dreaming. But it's more important that you're self-aware, that you could be dreaming and you're very aware of yourself. That's the key. Distinguishing planes of existence and levels, the dimensions of heaven and hell and stuff, that will come later. But the self-awareness is the most important part. Now the third aspect of this is place or location. He says, one must not live unconsciously. When we arrive at any place, we must observe it in detail, very minutely and thereafter ask ourselves, why am I here in this place? And by the way, you that are reading this book, tell me, did you already ask yourself why you were there in that place where you are reading? Did you already convince yourself, sorry, inconvenience yourself to observe that place, the ceiling or the walls or the space that surrounds you? Are you already observing the floor of the place? Up and down to the sides behind you and in front of you. Did you already look at the walls and your surroundings in order to ask the question, where am I? And if you did not, why did you not try? Or perhaps you are reading this book unconsciously? It's a very good question. It is clear that you must never live unconsciously, no matter where you are. In a house, on the street, in a temple, or in a taxi, on the sea, or in an airplane, etc. So wherever you may be, wherever you are, to be found. The first thing that you must ask yourself is, why am I in this place? Look minutely at everything that surrounds you, the ceiling, the walls, the floor. That observation is not only for the park, the house, or an unknown place, but one must do it daily, all the time. 
Look at your house as if it was something new or unknown. Do so every time and every moment that you enter it. You must also ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I in this house? What a strange house. And then look at the ceiling, the walls, and the ground, and the patio, etc. Everything in detail, and then ask yourself the question, why am I in this place? Could it be that I am in the astral body? Thereafter, perform a little extended jump with the intention of floating in the environment. If you do not float, but still feel that you are in the astral body, then go stand on top of a chair or on top of a low table or an ottoman, a strong box or something of that sort, and jump in the air with the intention of floating. Sometimes one performs the extended jump, and nevertheless, one does not float. Thus, the best solution is to go and stand on something that allows us to jump in the air in order to hover in the environment when one jumps with the intention of flying. Thus, it is clear that if one is in the astral world, one remains floating in the environment. And if not, then one returns to the ground. So do not forget the division of attention into three parts, subject, object, location. If one becomes accustomed to live with the attention divided into three parts, these three parts, the subject, the you, the object, the thing, and the location, if one is habituated to do it daily, at every moment from instant to instant, from second to second, then this habit becomes recorded deeply in the consciousness. Thus, at night, when our physical body sleeps, one performs the same exercise in the astral world. One does the same thing that one does in the physical body. The outcome is the awakening of the consciousness. You know that often at night, you repeat in dreams the same things that you usually do during the day. For example, during the day, many work in a factory or as a traveling salesman or in an office. Then at night during their dreams, they see themselves working, doing exactly the same things they were doing during the day. They dream that they are in the factory or selling or in the office. It is clear that everything that you do during the day, you repeat during the night. That is to say, you dream the same thing at night. So it is a matter of performing this practice during the day, at every hour, at every moment or second, in order to achieve it during the night, and thus awaken our consciousness. It is clear that when any person is physically sleeping, the essence, the consciousness, is far away from the physical body. Then it so happens that when the essence is outside of the physical body, it acts within the astral plane and repeats the same things that it does during the day. This is how you can awaken uh, automatically. Because the practice of this exercise gives a spark or shock to your consciousness, which then remains awake. Thus, my dear brothers and sisters, when one is already awake in the astral world and one one can invoke the masters, for example. One can call the angel Anael, or the angel Adonai, the child of light and happiness, or the master Kuthumi, so that they can uh, come to instruct us, to teach us, etc. Likewise, you can call any other master, namely Moria, the Count Saint. Uh, the Count Saint Germain, etc. And those who invoke me, they can be sure that I will concur to their call. They should be sure. Therefore, I give you the system in order to receive the teachings directly. And if you want to remember your past lives, then invoke the masters of the White Lodge, Kut Humi, Hilarion, Moria, etc. And ask them to have the amiability, the kindness, to help you to remember your former existences, to help you to recall your past lives. 
You can be sure that the masters will grant you such a petition. This system that I'm giving to you, all is in order to, for you to receive the direct knowledge. You can also travel to Eastern Tibet. You can also go to the depth of the oceans, including to other planets if you want. Thus, this is the way to receive direct knowledge. This is why I tell you, awaken my dear brothers and sisters, awaken, awaken. Do not continue living your life as an unconscious or sleeping individual. As this is very sad, my brothers and sisters. Behold the sleepy souls, how they walk unconsciously in the astral world. And after death, they continue asleep, unconscious and dreaming foolishness. They are born without knowledge at what time? They die without knowledge at what time? I do not want that to, I don't want that you, I don't want that you continue like this within that terrible unconsciousness. I want you to awaken. Alas, now as the intermediate state of the dreams arises before me. Sorry. Alas, now as the intermediate state of dreams arises before me, renouncing the corpse-like, insensitive sleep of delusion, I must enter, free from distraction, distracting memories, the state of the abiding nature of reality. Cultivating the experience of inner radiance through the recognition emanation and transformation of dreams, I must not sleep like a beast, but cherish the experimental, sorry, the experiential cultivation, which mingles sleep with actual realization. Padma Sambhava from Root Verses of the Six Intermediate States.